project that Jaime initiated, looking at pollinator communities and pocket parties around Houston. So uh, Steve Cunnings at University of Houston is collaborating, Chelsea Quaker at University of Dayton, and then Scott Gill is the student who's doing the actual work here. Um, and this is a new area for me. I've done a lot of work with grassland insects, but not pollinators. So this is this is a fun thing. By the way. Huh. Okay, so these are our sites. We have 12 sites around Houston. We have four remnant prairies, so Deer Park, Rock Hollow, the University of Houston Coastal Center, and Nash Prairie. And then we have eight restored sites <coughs> that we're using. So each of these is getting sampled twice this summer. Uh, I'll talk about the methods in a minute. So pollinator populations are declining. Most of you are probably familiar with this. Wild bee diversity is also on the decline, so we're losing many bee species. So managers interested in protecting uh, bee diversity at their sites would first need some baseline data. Right, so the first thing we want to know is just what does the pollinator community look like at a given site? How many species are there? Which species are there? Um, what is the relative abundance of those species? Do you have one or two really abundant species and a bunch that are very rare? Or is the relative abundance of the species fairly even? These are the things you want to know before you can really implement a, a sound management plan for bee diversity. So, and I think this is sort of the motivation behind um, behind me starting this project is just to start to get a handle on what the pollinator communities look like in um, the pocket prairies of this area. And then the second question that we wanted to ask was comparing the pollinator communities of these restored and remnant prairies and asking how closely they resemble each other. So, we use standard methods for sampling the bees. We use bee traps. Uh, this is a cup, but you can also use bowls. So you spray paint them with fluorescent paint, usually blue, yellow, and white. We fill them with soapy water, and they're left out for four to six hours at each site. And we can collect those bees and identify them and get an idea of the bee community. We're also doing focal observations of pollinators visiting plants. So we pick the two most abundant flowering plants at a site, and we'll watch a flower for 10 minutes, and then collect every pollinator that comes to that flower. Uh, so we replicate that <coughs> four times for each of two species of plants. And this gives us an idea of visitation rates. So how often are bees coming to pollinate flowers? Are we getting different types of bees in different species of flowers, or is it the same bees uh, visiting everything? That's the kind of information we get there. We're also doing some transects, um, walking, looking for butterflies, and some standard plant measurements. So looking at plant diversity, measuring abundance of, of flowers at a site. So we can get an idea of the, sort of what the resources look like from this point of view. So the challenges Involved. First of all, is that identifying bees is not easy. You can't do it in the field. <laughs> you have to have thin specimens. You have to look at them under a microscope. They use heat. They're very diverse. There are several hundred native bees in the area. I think around 500, something like that. So identifying them is not a small matter. Fortunately, we're working with Karen Wright. She's an entomologist at Texas A&M. She's going to help us identify the bees, and they're also going to house the bees that we collect in the museum collection there, which is really great because it means other people can potentially use this data. Um, apparently, if you collect the bees and use cyanide in your kill jar, it preserves the DNA, so potentially people could use the DNA from these bees. Um, but it also means that they have to be pinned and labeled properly um, up to museum collection standards. So Scott spent a day training on, on the proper way to pin bees with Karen. Uh, the other challenge is that this is just a snapshot, right? So we're out there two days in the summer, and maybe the weather's weird, or maybe it's storm the day before, and those things can affect uh, what we measure. It could also depend on what's flowering at that time. So this is just a 
quick look, but it's an important first step to, to illustrate what the communities are looking like in these, these plots. Um, I think the next step then is to continue monitoring these bee populations um, to get a good idea of what the different communities look like. That way we can look at trends. So um, is bee diversity increasing or decreasing at a particular site? And then we can start asking why. So the, the data that I've seen from Scott so far indicates that from the, pollen, from the focal data, from watching the flowers, there are more bees in our remnant sites than in the restored sites. So we don't know yet if that means more species or what, but if, if we find some patterns, then we can start asking why and maybe making some management decisions based on that data. But this is a really important first step that we need Park is definitely urban. Uh, the, most of the rest of the the remnant prairies are more rural. Like MD Anderson. Yeah. Uh, this one is a new. This eco lab is a new site that these people have designated the property as an eco lab, which is like a tax thing, apparently. And they're partnering with the University of Houston, but they want people doing research <laughs> at their site. Anyone can go do research there. It's got some really pretty. Uh, so just to double check, are you only collecting bees or beetles, anything that shows up He's as a pollinator? He's collecting anything that shows up at the flower because it can be hard to tell bees from flies without looking under the scope. So he's collecting everything initially and then anything that's in the bee hole gets collected. Anything that falls in the ground. Where is Rock Hollow? I'm not familiar with that. Rock Hollow is on the Warren Ranch, Katy Craig Conservancy. Oh, oh, it's about a 30 acre <laughs> remnant. And we just burned it last year, so it's full of flowers. It looks great. And by the way, it's appropriately named. It's the only place you can actually encounter rock yeah. at the surface of Harris County. Yeah. Okay. And one other thing, in terms of uh, Katie's question, he's doing a butterfly, an organized butterfly walk through each of these sites as well. So he's also trying to catalog as many butterflies. So it's butterflies and bees. Right, but those he's not collecting. So. Yeah. So, okay, well then I'm just understanding it. So it, they're collecting everything, but they're only recording bees? No, we're, so the bees are being collected and, and killed. Right. So he hasn't been getting uh, a lot of butterflies. The butterflies haven't been coming to the flowers. But flies and beetles and other things that come to the flowers and they will be recorded. It's recorded and collected. <coughs> so, so he'll say, okay, there were six. So maybe he only data. selected, yeah, maybe okay. he only caught five of the six, but everything is selected and recorded, yeah. How did you select the sites that you've got up here as sites to go to to collect? So we wanted a mix of sizes, and there was also issues with who would, who would let us. Like some people weren't comfortable with letting us kill bees. Some people didn't. Um. Well, what if that was the last bee? <laughs> <laughs> what about that well, it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the last bee, the population is. Yeah, it's done anyway. <laughs> but I mean, I think that, that, let me answer that question because yeah. we did have a couple of sites that would not allow us to do this, and we respect their, their set of ethics. Yeah. But this is primary research, and you have to take voucher specimens to actually establish a baseline in this case. So we felt pretty confident. And actually, we've been having 
lots of great partnerships. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's a number of sites here, including the Arboretum, where sampling is taking place. And we hope that the sacrifice of these few bees will help us better understand the dynamics that are happening. Great. It's so nice that they will be housed in the Texas A&M collection instead of just the So this year is the baseline data. How frequently do you plan to monitor? Is it going to be annually, or are you going to raise the future? Uh, we have funding uh, <laughs> through, uh, monarch funding for this. So it, it kind of depends, I think, on what we get, the data that we get at the end of the, of the year. Um, I could very easily see us going back and getting more funding for kind of follow-ups. Not sure if we do need to do it every year, but certainly maybe every three years or something like that, just to look at the data set. Mm -hmm. It's not too incredibly time-intensive, no. says the person who's not doing the work. But <laughs> <laughs> Outcome, just we know more. Um, as a storyteller and somebody who's writing grants um, to get money to make pocket prairies or to restore remnant prairies, and it's going to be very powerful if we can get some photographs, some documentary evidence, and things like that. Right now, we're just kind of we tell people that pocket prairies are good for pollinators, but nobody's done the research. In fact, when we went to ask the local bee expert I and mean, the state bee experts, like, can you give us a, a bee list? For Harris and surrounding counties, he said, there is no list. There is no list. So this is like the very basic primary research that fuels stories that get money to do these projects, in my mind. What's that? you see most of your funding from the monarch in the future? No, I mean, uh, but I think that there's going to be a lot of monarch funding for the foreseeable future, especially if there's a listing. And I don't know where that listing process is right now, but it's moving through the, the channels. Um, well, uh, since Scott isn't going to be around uh, next year or something like that, maybe um, once you get the results, you can, you can t talk at the Native Birds Association and give us a update of that, of the results. No, we still have, there's still time for us to talk amongst ourselves about uh, pollinators. I'll just say that uh, yeah. <laughs> pollinators are, are a really popular topic right now, as many of you all know. And, and because of that, grants for pollinators are really abundant right now. So if, if y'all are interested in doing pollinator research, the funding is, is definitely out there right now. People are, uh, organizations are interested in funding that. We got we got one to the South Fork River School. Mm -hmm. Our volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm Chris Harrison from the Just one uh, quidado on that. 
Uh, I work on the West Love Street Park in the sort of Timber Grove area of Houston. Uh, we tried that right at the edge of the woods canopy, and we had ants within a day uh, <laughs> nesting in the bee boxes. So we had to put on some uh, tangle foot to, to uh, keep that from happening. Uh -huh. yeah, ours are on uh, galvanized post. Seems to be helping, and there's not enough. Uh, it's not attracting the bees. I mean the ants. So, so far, so good. What, what kind of uh, bee box? Uh, it's the solid four by four with holes, oh. and then he painted it. Um, I gave him a lot of re research to look up, and we discussed it. it was kind of an experiment for both of us. And he knew nothing about native bees, but he started. He did a really good job. So they put him on galvanized coal. It was just a typical four by four. He put a little roof over it and painted it red and green. And it really makes our pocket prairies look more like an exhibit as instead of just that uh, grassy. What are the folks that track a wide variety of species? Well, I'm not sure really what species are in there because it's just been in there a matter of months. But two weeks after it was up, we uh, I had a group out and we counted how many holes were filled in each six box. And uh, there was uh, a third holes filled in each of the six houses. And so I thought it was pretty fast. I thought that was amazing. Okay, that's five minutes.